We at Great Lakes Hybrids have been serving generations of farmers with outstanding service, the latest technology, and new yield producing proprietary genetics. We're happy to partner with Farms.com Risk Management to bring you this latest market update. Welcome to the Farmers.com Risk Management Daily Market Commentary for June 25th. It's a Monday. We got a lot to cover today because we got uh, livestock down hard, grains up hard. So let's start off with uh, our title here that uh, U.S. Cold Storage Report, better than expected. Uh, most of the numbers came in with lower than expectations. You can see there from chicken to beef to pork, um, lower than um, last month, but still higher than last year. So uh, that's the bearish part of this report. Lower than expectation, but still higher than uh, all of last year. Here's uh, U.S. pork and cold storage for the end of May 31st, 2012. You can see on average um, pork in cold storage is, is about 114 million more pounds than the five-year average. Here's the expectations. Market was looking for about uh, 643 million pounds. Pork and cold storage came in at 636, compares to last month at 659. Uh, pork bellies lower as well at 65.3 versus expectations at 70.5, and last month at 74.9. And beef came in at um, 498 compared to 521, and last month at 517. So, bottom line, um, uh, you can see the big rally because of the purge hole and hogs for the July futures contract. Uh, this rally probably is a little overbought. Not surprised that we're taking some profits here short term. As many now think that purse hole is done. Packers, U.S. Packers still deeply in the red, but they have most of the hogs um, supply covered for the next two weeks as we approach the Independence Day holiday. What's weighing on hogs also today is lower outside markets due to, of course, European fears again, as well as a uh, bearish cattle on feed report, uh, despite the bullish um, cold storage report for beef. Um, this is an overreaction. Uh, support comes in around that. Um, this is the August feeder cattle daily futures chart. Uh, and you can see support comes in right around that uh, 150 per carcass level. Most of the, this is oversold, so most of the news already factored into the market. So, uh, no new recommendations on grain or basis today, but we are suggesting that perhaps uh, hog producers uh, look at uh, placing some orders in for the August futures contract. For most U.S. hog producers, uh, the July window is gone. Um, I think you're okay with that period, uh, but we'd place some orders to sell 30% of your hogs forward at 96, 25% at 98, and 25% at 100. We're still waiting to see if we can get some uh, further strength in the deferreds over the next 30 to 60 days. Um, December 12, a corn daily futures chart. You can see here the big spike jump in corn futures. We now have uh, corn next target is around 616 and we got resistance coming in around 645 as well. So looking for corn to probably trade above $6 overnight. Uh, as dry weather concerns continue. We got November soybean daily futures chart. You can see the big spike there. Um, this is November soybean futures chart. Uh, we're now trading at new contract highs. We raised our price target about two months ago to 15. We think that uh, if these dry conditions continue, we could see $15 per bushel. November canola also approaching the $600 level. Many of you asking whether we can break it. Looks like we might just break it. It's just going to be a matter of time. And we got the USDA crop progress report. Market's looking for a 2 to 3% decline in the good to excellent crop conditions for both corn and beans. If it comes in lower than expected, this market may continue, may add some fuel to the fire, uh, but if it's if it's coming in as expected, um, market may have already factored it in with today's rally. Morgan Stanley looking for higher corn and soybean prices because of the U.S. drought concerns. USDA reporting 120,000 metric ton uh, soybean sale to China for the 12-13 marketing year. 11-12 canola futures. This is old crop now approaching that resistance in that 640. We're running out of time for those who have a basis contract on July futures. You're gonna have to make a decision by the end of the week. If you waited this long, you're getting a little lucky. Thank you, lucky stars. Sell it. Um, we had targets of 650, 700, but again, you're gonna have to roll forward. There's a fee, there's a spread, not worth it. Take it, 
say good luck, say thank you, and uh, move on to new crop. If you still have some old crop left in the bin, you can maybe roll forward and, and see how uh, how much this thing wants to run up. But the, I don't know if the macro environment, I've been seeing that for a while, is enough momentum to get you to that 700, 750 from 2008. We've got uh, six 10 day, 10 day forecast in US, remains very, very dry. That's why this market continues to move higher. We're getting into pollination between now and the first week of July over the next two weeks. China forecasting rains in the dry producing provinces. Uh, we got 12 UK Ukraine grain production down to about 43, 44 million metric tons. You can see pastures, what they've done coming to that lower end of production over the last uh, 10 to 20 years. Because of a drought, we seem to have a lot of dry weather this year. U.S. pork cutout finally breaking above 100, but that's not helping nearby futures just yet because expectations are that this PERS hole has peaked. And so unless this cutout can go much higher, the cash market uh, futures will not probably move much higher. Um, open interest in July futures are lower as they roll forward to August. August open interest higher. So it's just a matter of time, but we probably have to get through the July long weekend in the US before futures might tread higher, but historically very, very high. Chinese pork prices down 33% from last year. Chinese government trying to entice producers to uh, lower their production to uh, help that pork price going forward. JP Morgan uh, forecasting lower crude oil prices, 106 for 12, 104 to 2013. We think it could be even lower. Outside markets lower, again, because of that European crisis now down about 3.1%. We had a, a, a big down day last Thursday and we're down again today. Uh, CME hours now go to two. Uh, equal to the electronic trading hours, so the CB, CBOT pit trading hours. The guys on the floor there uh, now have to work till 2 p.m. They're actually launching a lawsuit against the, the, the CBOT and CME that uh, they're thinking uh, they're going to be out of a job soon in the future. Uh, it makes the pit trading less important going forward. And then we've got uh, Friday's cattle on feed report was actually bearish. Uh, more cattle on feed and manage money buying corn contracts. We hit a low of 43,000. There's an excuse to buy some contracts. They're now buying ten, uh, three out of 10 years. They'll typically start to buy. Um, and that's what's happening because of weather. They're adding a little bit to the beans, kind of flat on the wheat contracts. Till next time, thanks for watching. Have a great day.